Okay, so our first example just asks us to generate the first few terms in a number of sequences written here on the board. Right? Um, this uh, curly bracket notation is the notation that's used in the Apex Calculus books for, for sequences. So we're thinking of this, if you like, as a set, I think, is the idea behind the notation. Other textbooks will, will put round brackets around the terms in a sequence. Other books will, will do the, you know, so you might find brackets around the AN. You might find no brackets at all. Notation tends to vary somewhat on these. Um, as long as we get our point across, maybe it doesn't matter how we write it. Let's try to be consistent. Um, so with this first one, we have an exponential on top, 3 to the n. On the bottom, we have this factorial. So let me just remind you, in case you've forgotten the factorial, you probably encountered it back um, when you were looking at Taylor polynomials, if you did study Taylor polynomials um, along with linear approximations back in the chapter on derivative approximations. You might not have encountered them yet, depending on the order in which you see the material. Factorial is just the product of the first n integers. So it means 1 times 2 times 3 and so on up to n, right? Um, or another way to define it is we can define it like this. Um, now, one thing that's kind of odd, we do actually define 0 factorial, oddly enough. Um, 0 factorial is defined to be 1. Um, there are a number of ways to understand why 0 factorial should be 1 that we're not going to necessarily get into right now. Um, one of the reasons, simple reason, is it is going to make some formulas work out a lot better for us later on once we get to Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. Okay, so 0 factorial is 1. Um, 1 factorial is, is also 1. And then n factorial, we just do n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial for each n bigger than or equal to 1, right? So 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial, still 1. 2 factorial is one time, 2 times 1 factorial, so you get 2. Um, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial, so it's 3 times 2 times 1, you get 6, and so on, right? Um, so with that in mind, we come over here, and four terms, I guess we did, the question doesn't say whether we should start at 0 or 1. Maybe we'll start at 0 and we'll do five terms just to play it safe. Um, so we'll do n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? a sub n will be what? Um, will be 3 to the 0 over 0 factorial. Anything to the 0 is 1, so 3 to the 0 is 1. 0 factorial, we just said that's 1. Okay. Maybe, we should, maybe equals is not the best thing to put here. Okay. Um, there's a1. Sorry, a0. a1 will be 3 to the 1 over 1 factorial. So you get 3. A2 will be 3 to the 2 over 2 factorial. So that's 9 over 2. Okay. A3 will be 3 cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, so that's 3 times 3 times 3. It's 27. Sometimes it's convenient to write things out like this because you can simplify a little bit. Cancel those threes. Ah, it's also 9 over 2. Okay. And then 3 to the 4th over 4, we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We can cancel a couple of them. Uh, that's going to come out to be 27 over 8. Right. Um, so one of the things you can see here is that initially the exponential is bigger, right? 9 is bigger than 2, 27 is bigger than 8. But each time we, we kind of proceed to the next step, we're multiplying on the top again by 3. 
but the number we're multiplying by on the bottom is getting bigger each time. Um, so the factorial is going to grow faster than an exponential, right? And we're used to thinking of the exponential as this very fast-growing thing. Factorials grow even faster, right? So eventually, the denominator is going to win here, and we expect that these terms should get smaller and smaller and smaller if we let things go on long enough, okay? But there's the first four or five terms, if you like. One, three, nine over two, nine over two, 27 over eight. We can come to the next one. So, a zero will be four plus minus one to the zero. That's five, right? A one will be four plus minus one to the one. So that's four minus one, we get three. A two, well, we're going to be back to minus 1 squared, even power again, so we get 4 plus 1, so 5, and you can kind of see what's going to happen here, right? A3 will be 3, A4 will be 5, and this sequence is just going to jump back and forth between 5 and 3, so 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, for however long you want to go. All right, let's come to this last one. You might be worried about the... Uh, the fraction here with the minus 1, that seems like trouble, but it's okay because, you know, whatever number n is, remember n has to be a natural number, so it's either even or odd. If n is odd, well then n plus 1 will be even. So one of these two is always even, so we divide by 2, we still get a whole number. We're fine. We can do minus 1 to an integer power. That makes sense. So, um, ah, we better not start at 0 for this one, right? Can't divide by 0. So this one is definitely going to start at 1. So we'll do a1, a2, a3, a4. We do have to pay attention to these things sometimes. So a1 is going to be minus 1 to the, let's see, it'll be 1 times 2 divided by 2. Minus 1 to the 1 over 1 squared. So we just get 1. Uh, minus 1, sorry. a2, we're going to get, let's see, It'll be 2 times 3 divided by 2, we get 3, right? And so that's minus 1 to the 3. On the bottom we have 2 squared, 4 minus 1 over 4. A3, we're going to have 3 times 4 divided by 2. So 3 times 4 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 minus 1 to the 6, okay, over 3 squared, 9, so 1 over 9, and finally, a 4, if n is equal to 4, we're going to have 4 times 5 divided by 2, so we have 20 divided by 2, that's 10, 10 over 2, yeah, sorry, 10, right, 20 over 2 is 10. So minus 1 to the 10, it's even again, over 4 squared, 16, so we get 1, 1 over 16 for that one. And again, we could, we could keep going. Um, here, probably the main challenge is it seems like maybe it's a little bit hard to predict whether this thing is going to come out to be an even or an odd number as n goes on, right? The bottom we understand, that's easy to understand. Um, whether we should have plus 1 or minus 1 in the numerator, we'd have to think a little bit about that if we wanted to continue this sequence on any further.